three, two. Hello everybody and welcome to the second part in Glitch's Let's Build and Code. So today we're going to be finishing off the first door in our two door stepped security system. So if I come over here, out. So here's the computer, there's the secret door there, there's the monitor, and there is a iron note block which uh, I've added, which means that we can actually make the computer make beeps and, and dings and stuff. Um, as well as something else that's incredibly cool, but I don't want to play around with that just yet. I don't want to spoil the surprise. So, I think I'm right in saying the white is down. Yep. So, what we're going to do is we're going to write the program that's going to make this work for us. So, um, join me over here. Uh, to show to see how to write programs. Okay. Okay. So to do this uh, project, I'm going to use Sublime Text Editor, which is by far the best text editor I've ever used for programming in Lua. It's just got a lot of features. It's free. Um, they do ask that you pay for it if you like it. Um, I've not got around to it yet, but it's very, very good, and I will definitely be purchasing myself a copy of this in the future. I think it's only about thirty dollars as well, which is pretty reasonable for a program like this. So, as well as um, Sublime Text Editor, I'm also going to be using uh, Pastebin to paste up my program, there we are, and um, use it to allow me to download it in-game. So let's get started. I've sped this up. If you want the um, slower, full-length version, it's over an hour long. I've uploaded that as well. Check the annotation that's on screen at the moment. So first of all, I'm just setting up an array. Uh, a table with the sides in it. It's actually in a way because it's uh, indexed. Um, okay, so now I'm just deciding what side that we're going to use, which is bottom, so that's the output side for the cables. Input code is the code that you have to push to do the, uh, to open the door. So it's 1973. Um, what's interesting is you notice it's a string, so that stops it from... it stops a lot of issues with... Uh, uh, with um, adding numbers and stuff, so if you just leave, leave, have it as a string, all the problems solved. That button push, combo success, combo fail, they are notes, so that the note block can make nice noises when it when things go right. So we've got code open equals false, that's just, that's me um, programming whether or not the door is open or false, uh, open or closed, so the idea is that that would change depending on whether it's open or not. So code door is a table that um, stores all the relative variables to do with the door. Um, so yeah, um, what I've done here is I'm actually programming in the pass code, the you know the sort of um, pass card door that I've not done in this um, tutorial. It's not really a tutorial, but I'm I'm not doing in this let's code. Um, it's not really necessary, but because uh, I think I'll probably end up using a separate computer for that. But for now, um, I put it in there just in case. So local draw list is um, actually. Um, how I'm going to render things onto the screen because the buttons will need to change color obviously when you click on them um, So the best way I could think of doing that is to have a list of things to draw and then whenever something needs to change You sort of invalidate the list which forces it to um, Redraw everything Output is the monitor click list is um, we'll get into click list in a bit click list is how I handle clicking on the screen um, Count is the number of buttons that have been pushed. Combo is the current running combination. And current color just remembers what the background color should be. So main is obviously the main function. So first we're going to make a function that uh, opens and closes the doors. So this one takes two arguments, which door we're talking about and open. And they're going to, door will need to be a table um, because it will contain the open and close um, colors and how many pulses it needs. So, yeah, so we're using the, we're passing in the code door and saying false, which means it needs to close. So, to make this actually work, we're going to make a little pulse RS um, function, and this is going to be a nice little function that um, allows you to, it will pulse um, a bundled color. Um, if you pass in a colour, or if not, I'll just pulse the side that you pass in. So the way this works is you simply um, give it a colour, you give it a side, it will add that side to uh, that colour to the side, and then pulse it for 0.45 of a second, and then turn it back off again. 
and it'll do that for n number of times. Okay, so now we're just going to carry on and uh, finish off the move door. Okay, so then the else would obviously be the close for the door. You have no idea how long this took me to make. This is sped up and I'd already completed the code by this point. I just was just writing it out. I had it on another screen nearby. Wow, it took me four hours to program this yesterday. I'm not even joking. And it took me an hour and 20 minutes just to write it out again. I know, it's terrible. So lazy. So here, get monitor. I might write a nice little function that gets the monitor whatever side it is. Um, I might have to change this because I'm looking at adding two monitors, which obviously might be an issue. <laughs> so I'm saying check each side individually. If there's a monitor there, return it as a peripheral. Simple. You've done that before. So now I'm going to do the same for a note block. So it's exactly the same as get monitor except there's a note and you change the string there for note instead of monitor. So now I feel a bit silly. So I think, oh, well, I'll just change that for type and that'll work fine. So I'll just say, so you just put in the string that you want. Get rid of those two. So it's get peripheral. It does the same job as both functions. I think about this point, the cat jumps on my lap and makes me jump. Was that later? I don't know. Someone watch the hour and 20 minute version and remind me. Okay, so now I'm going to make a what's basically a, uh, a class called new box. Um, what's that? What that's going to do is going to be it's going to function as a renderable box, um, which is going to be the basis for the button. And the button itself is going to extend this. But basically, what I'm doing is um, I've made a table and I'm passing in each of those variables that are defined in the argument arguments at the top. I'm giving it a type box, and then you return it. I think I might have some, might have some Coke, some not Coca Cola, some cola drink. All the, the drinks are available. So now I'm just explaining briefly how classes work. Jim, as you can see there, is now effectively a box, so we can run functions through Jim and uh, methods that are on Jim. Now invalidate is a, a function that's going to be on Jim that invalidates the draw list that he's attached to, which means that the next time round uh, the program, the draw list will need to redraw itself. So now I'm explaining basically um, when you add self to a function and then a comma, uh, a colon, sorry, like that, instead of a full stop between it and its method uh, function, you basically you automatically pass in that self argument. So it means you can reference itself during the running of that function. It's just a nice little hack. Well, it's not a hack, it's part of the language, but you know, it's a nice little thing that just makes things a bit easier. So now I'm adding the draw function, which is the, the, um, the meat of this, uh, function, uh, meat of this program actually is very important function, the draw function. So first we set the color to the color, the background color to the buttons color, so that whenever we draw, it'll change the background to the correct color. Okay, so now we're starting at X, and then we're going until X plus width minus one. So that means that because Lura is um, one indexed, it means that everything starts at once. You have to take one off so that you don't end up adding an extra one, basically. Okay, same for Y, obviously, there. And then we um, we simply uh, set the output to XY and write speech marks and empty speech marks there. 
So now what I'm doing there, X, self X. Um, what I'm trying to do is find the center of the button, then offset it by the center of the string, so that the string is starting um, in such a way so that it would be center aligned on the button. So a little trick there is to time something by 0 0.5 instead of divide by 2, because computers don't like dividing, and timesing is a lot easier. So I'm getting rid of that gym nonsense. So now we're going to extend the new box stuff with the new button. So we say box equals new box. And then it has a color, down color, label, and a value. Value being what it returns when it's clicked on. So this one has a slightly different draw function. This basically um, will use a counter um, to count the number of ticks um, it's been down, and then if it's been down the correct number of ticks, it will go back to being up. So if it's clicked on, it goes down, renders a few times down. Where um, after after that counter down counter there is um, zeroed, it will uh, go back to being up. So now, this is slightly different from the version that's online, and this is a nice little um, uh, optimization. It just basically changes the color to down color, renders the button as an up button, even though you've changed the color down, and then you change the color back, and then you minus one on the down counter, and invalidate the draw list, which is very important because that means that it actually draws the button clicked on, clicked on excuse me. So now we're just putting all the extra variables onto the button. Up draw and draw obviously are very important. They're the ones that render the button. So we've moved the original draw um, from button.draw to up draw. So button.updraw is now uh, the regular draw. And button.draw now chooses between up draw and the regular one. So now we're going to create all the buttons. So width of one, height of one, color blue, color red when it's clicked, and um, a label of one, and a value return of one. So when it's clicked on, it will return one. So obviously these are all copy and paste, that's simple. So we just change the names and the positions. So X and Y, obviously, we've got, um, first it starts at the top, uh, and then in one, all the way down to the bottom and in one from the left, that uh, from the right, excuse me. There we go. Took a very long time, that. Okay, so now we're actually, it's time we start actually handling some functions, I think. Ah, uh, no, now we're gonna create the draw list, um, which also adds to the click list, which is how we figure out whether something's been clicked on or not. So, first we add something to the end of the click list, unless defined otherwise. Uh, the draw list, sorry. So now we're going to... So we also add the, the draw list to the parent of the object that's being added to it. So now we're going to create a click list, or at least create a function to add to the click list. Now what this does is the click, li click list will represent a theoretical X and Y or 2D sort of plane where everything, every pixel that can be clicked is um, represented in the array. So because there's not many pixels, this isn't a very expensive thing, but um, it's much more efficient ways to do it in faster computers. So what we're doing there is um, we create an array, if there isn't one already, at click list X, and then insert the object that we're talking about at click list, click list X, Y. So there we go, that's just running that there. And then we invalidate it after something's been added because that just makes sense. Hmm. I think I actually forgot to add things to the uh, 
Draw list. That was silly of me. I do go back and fix this off camera, I think. Ah, see, so yeah. So, draw screen. So, if draw list is invalid, we uh, make it valid. You make it valid first because some of the buttons might make it invalid again automatically. So if, it, if a button's been clicked on, it automatically makes the draw list invalid again to force it to redraw automatically. That's foot laughing in the background, if you can hear her. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I definitely forgot to uh, add the buttons to the draw list. Um, that's a bit silly of me. Check the um, the program as it stands on paste bin. There's a functioning, as you'll see at the end of the video, a functioning version of this program. Uh, just check it out on paste bin and you'll be able to see what it should have done. So clear events, what that does is in um, computer craft, um, you have an event system um, that holds the computer until it gets an event. Now, sometimes that'll be the wrong event and that's not what you want. Um, so the clear events basically just adds a new event to the end and then zooms through the event list until um, an event is, um, until that added event comes up then you know that the event list is empty in theory it, it might not be because of timers and stuff but it's the best you can do really so uh, we pull an event knowing that hopefully the event list is empty and we also start a timer because uh, pulling an event can cause a computer to freeze and if it freezes for more than 10 seconds the game uh, the uh, program ends it'll crash so you make a little pro uh, you start a little timer going if the timer hits six seconds before um <laughs> If the timer hits six seconds before uh, anything else happens, then it'll just go around again. So now we're just making something that um, figures out what is at. You see how it's checking click list X and Y. It returns that if it is if it does exist, um, and then if it's clickable, you click it using object colon click as featured there, um, which returns its combo value, which which is added to the combo. And then count plus one, and then we play the noise there with the note play box, uh, play note. So, if the count is uh, four and combo is correct, we sleep for 0.1 of a second just to let the sounds catch up, and we play a new sound. But we haven't got that functionality yet, so I've just pasted that in as you saw. Play note. So we just play note. Combo success. Play note basically is just a wrapper that lets you play multiple notes. Uh, move door. Code door true, sleep five seconds, end. Now, because we um, at the beginning of the program, we um, close the doors automatically when the game when the program starts. We don't need to worry about shutting the door. We just let the uh, let that do it, and then we reboot the computer. So at this point, we want to break it because we've also we've already hit the monitor touch event. And we want to break it, and make sure it draws the screen, clears the events, and starts again. So now we're going to paste it into, um, okay, so now that the program's finished, we just go over here and we say um, rom slash programs slash http slash paste bin space get space bing, 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 bing get and then um, what was it? Um, and we'll call it startup. There you go. So that's downloading. So now we'll run startup. There we go. There we go. And now we've got a coded door. So now all you need to do is go up and say. One, nine, seven, three. So that's correct. And nothing's happening.
Oh, I left the levers on. Uh, let's try again. Let's wait for it to restart. What are you doing? Oh, damn it. Da -dum. Yay. Aha, brilliant. And the door's open, finally. And then in a second, there it goes. Fantastic. So in between episodes, I think I'll add another monitor here so you can get out again. Prove it works second time. Come on. There we go. Fantastic. And another ding dong. So brilliant. It works. So join us next episode um, to see uh, how to add in a keycard system. So, thank you very much for coming along, guys. It's been really fun. Um, I would really appreciate it if you guys can like the video, if you enjoyed it. If you didn't, you know, dislike it. Feel free to dislike it and let me know. Um, and then I won't make any more. And then I, don't, I won't waste any of your guys' time. Because that's all we're here about. We want to make entertainment that you guys enjoy. And I think this might be a boring for some people, but, you know, you might not. So, okay. Um, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to check the link in the annotations and in the comments, uh, in the description, if you want to see the full programming section. Uh, it is over an hour long, so, you know, don't, um, don't worry about it if it's not your sort of thing. But if it is, you know, feel free to check it out. You get a full description of everything that happens. Okay, thank you very much for watching. I've been Glitch. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Goodbye.